heavy web. All right, the next okay. speaker is Ben Perry that we keep discussing about large samples. Okay, so let me start. Continue the discussion presented by Jung. So I am trying to look at the problem the galaxy clusters. So, as you know, Mount has a missing that missing that problem in galaxy clusters. But in the past, uh, the total mass is usually measured with the uh, hydrostatic uh, equilibrium, which is thermodynamics. It's kind of different from galaxies because in galaxies we measure the dynamic mass from kinematics. By location. So you want to use a different way to see which way you can get uh, some benefits. So this is called uh, galaxy kinematics. This is the motivation for the work. And I would like to tell you my wonderful collaborators. Those who are presented in the conference are highlighted in red color. You can Marcel Federico and Stacy. And this paper is in this archive. So you can check it if you want. Uh, so, just briefly remind you the typical map approaches to derive the total mass in galaxies. So, the hyperstatic equilibrium, so you can see this is the more recent work. The basically, this is from the EUCITA data, which, is represent, which represents the best data quality you can have for the mass construction. Uh, you can trace the square to the potential to about 500, a little bit larger than that. Uh, smaller than two megaparsec, but larger than one megaparsec. This is typical scale you can imagine. And for the another way is using graph functional lensing. So for strong lensing, we can trace about to five or six hundred ppc, which is in the central region. But if you want to go to the large radii, so we can use lensing, weak lensing, which can trace to quite impressively, so four or five megaparsec. But the error bar also increases the range. Uh, we use a different approach here using the third tracer, which is very lessly used in the literature, so not much work. And also, the, also many have some systematics in the papers, so we want to improve that. So the so first thing is trying to, the, the, the central equation for this method is the GNC question. So we treat cluster galaxies as the tracers. So the new is the tracer density, that's good, plus the number densities. And sigma red, this is the radial velocity current, and the best beta parameter which quantifies the velocity entropy. What we want to measure is total mass m. This is our m, and this is what we can measure. If we know the galaxy distributions, so we know the, the velocity current and the uh, number of distributions. And to use this, this equation, we would derive the total mass. Certainly, we assume the galaxies are in dynamic equilibrium with the whole. So keep that in mind, we'll get that, get back to that. So then next, what we can observe is the actual project the galaxy distribution, not the really volume number density. And last study velocity, not the 3D velocity. So we would have to get the match from the what we can observe to what the quantity we really want. So this is project to the equation which relates to the last side velocity spread and the surface gravity is Galaxy number, uh, surface number density, sigma. And in a 2D radius, as a function of 2D radius r. And this is the 3D projections. And uh, so basically, we'll solve these equations from the given parameters. OK, so we have uh, the genesis problem. So if you have ever tried this approach, you probably know. But if you don't, so we, have, we can go back to the equation. So you will have a large beta, so we can have small beta. Total matter. So there's a degeneracy here. So we want to break it so as fast as we can do. So this is called, these two relations has been derived in the literature, which relates the integral in two dimensional, in two D surface uh, from the galaxy surface number density, which is equivalent to the 3D integral, uh, which is related to the total mass and the um, galaxy number density and the velocity. Radial velocity is perfect. So there are two parameters here we can use, which help break the earlier get the degeneracy problem. So we'll see how the problem goes. And remind you again, so this is uh, the parameters, the surface galaxy number density, and this is the radial velocity is perfect. So uh, this is that we use. We introduced the approach. So this is that we have used, which is called the highest flux, the highest flux galaxy class samples 
initially compiled by Thomas in Bonn, and which includes 63 clusters. So the actual observation is done by the Rosetta Oscar survey, then their optical data has been collected for decades. So the, de so the, the data I'm using is collected by many people, so I cannot even mention one reference. So you, you can look at the uh, Tien's paper, so there's a very long list for the reference, and many data, you can download that there. And Yung refined the data to be collected more uh, galaxy samples from, uh, from Sinbad. And we require the offset between the optical center and the galaxy center are smaller than 60 kbc. Because if you want to have set the equilibrium, you can choose the extra center. But if we want to use the galactic galaxies to us, so we can use the optical center. But if we want to compare this nuts profiles, it's better we can assume the spare symmetry. So if the offset is smaller than a fair, fair values, we we'll say okay, we assume uh, the entire cluster is spare symmetric. So because we, we want to produce the statistics, for each beam we want at least 25 galaxies. So to form a statistical meaningful beam. So we require at least three beams, and then we have to have at least 75 member galaxies. Then we can measure the galaxy profile. We are not trying to measure the mass, but the total mass, mass profiles, which would provide stronger constraints. Uh, eventually we have 16, so which is much smaller, well, but we want some better data, better results. And 16 galaxies into the clusters. Give you one example how those galaxies are distributed in the best space, one is the, in the project distributions. So the stars are representing those galaxies who are presenting from us and those representing galaxies approaching to us. So, and this velocity spiral we can see is proved uh, with respect to the central velocity, which is represented by BCG, brightest central galaxy. And we see the velocity distribution as a function of projected radius. So we see a nice trump bed shape, which means because at a large radii, the gravitational potential is weak. So the escape, escaping velocity is so required, it's, the escaping velocity is smaller, so we see the decrease in velocity profile. And from that, we can calculate the service galaxy number density as that is probably which appears in the GMC equation, so we have to have this function. So we have the data, but the, we, it's better to have a function in, input into the equation, so we can solve it. So we use multiple parameters using plum, plum sphere. You can certainly use King's model or any other models. As long as you superpose them together, you have enough, enough parameters you can describe. As you see, I think this is a good page, whatever you think about. Uh, this is the project number this thing. So once we fit this profile, the projected one, and then we get the parameters A and N. So we use three plus there. You can add more. But three is enough for our cases. And then we know the parameters, then we can have we basically know the volume distributions, that's the number that's there of galaxies. And also, so this is a central equation for the GNC sphere GNC equation. So we want to this is the data, the beam data, and this is profile we want to match. And we use the NAS profiles, which has six parameters, which is just initially designed as a document head model, but I don't use it as a document head model. This has six parameters, much more than MFW. So that means it's very flexible. So if I use an MFW, the NAS profile will bias towards an MFW. I don't want that. So I use the general uh, profile, so that's provide the total mass profiles, so we can remove bias. This is so the in the both the inner slope and out slope can be changed. So they do not fix to three or plug an atom three or one in the in the three. So this is uh, six so among our sixteen glass clusters, so six of them, uh, so we can as has been identified, they have some turbulence in the X-ray images, which is in, which implies they have merging history, that galaxy clusters are just merged. Uh, in the past are, are still on the process of merging. Okay, uh, so that means the dynamics, they probably are not in dynamic equilibrium with the entire clusters. So we include, exclude them. So you can see that the merit total dynamic mass is significantly higher than the hydrostatic uh, equilibrium. So this is impressive. And they are sometimes more high than small radii, but this could be a difference. And the, the dashed line is the is 
uh, equally divide the galaxy number, so basically the same number in the region and same right on the right region. So the dash line is R500, give you an idea how large this cluster could be. So this is uh, our main results. So part of the clusters we have derived, which is shoot by the, uh, by the dead points with airbus. So we those part clusters we have the data from XCOP, they also measure the, the hyperset equilibrium mass, hyperset mass, so which represented by blue curves. So you see, we basically for have a good um, consistency for some clusters, but not, especially our results are systematically higher than the their results, especially for these clusters, and also here. Yeah. So, and also, so this is R500, uh, test lines are uh, R500, so we have an idea. So the, the green curve is the stellar mass distributions. I will get back to you uh, what they are derived. And this is the extrapolation from the gamma, gamma functions, but they are less trustworthy. So I suggest you to compare our results to x the data, which is more trustworthy, in my opinion. But still, their results are lower than ours. Uh, it's known hyperset mass is underestimated, so total mass should be high. So that's uh, optimistic because that is meant, uh, could imply our results more and more robust. So who knows? Uh, uh, this is for this power class. For this power, power class, we do have the x corp data. So we just got the beta bits. I have the best beta bits, so I calculate the hyperset equilibrium myself and get them. So they are also systematic high, you know. So then we uh, have the after we calculate the mass. So as we said, we grab the degeneracy. So we took so. And uh, this is say that we have the well concerned mass profile. But for this uh, anisotropic parameter, we have very large uncertainties. Uh, we have mass profiles well constrained. The reason is we plot it in log scale. So the error bar could be large. But once we plot in log scale, it could be very, looks very small. But this is probably in linear scale, this is why you see a much larger error bar than the mass. And for most of them, so as small already I would see almost uh, near astrophic, at least within the error bar. Also, the error bar is large. But a large area, yeah, most of the cluster goes in increase in little bit, so we see the uh, systematic effect. You can spread uh, the um, A2029, which is very steady, so which makes me think it's probably the term, our phone function is just too restrictive because it's too extended. So it could be a problem with it. We will look at that in the future. So, okay, this is the table I showed. So we see compared the hyperspatial mass with the dynamic mass, which means at R500, 16 minutes high, from 4% to 92%. That's very high. Um, but this is a good for cosmology reason because people worry about sigma A tension. So if hyperspatial mass is high, then we could solve the, the cosmology the cosmology problem. But then we found this higher mass, which is which helps that. But on the other side, side we well, also has a wrong periodic equation. So this is a, you can twist so this side then you mess up the other side. Okay, so we want to test. Uh, the radio exertion version. This is the model conference, so this is my main point. So we want to have a stellar mass in PCG using the KBF luminosity from two mass, and we use the scattering relations exception there. The, the, these types of scattering relations between KBF uh, K luminosity and the mass, stellar mass. So for two mass, so then we can calculate the stellar mass. Because our samples do not uh, have a uh, mass band as small radii. So we treated them as point mass. Uh, we, we only have that point in a large area, so that does not affect our results. So we treat the stellar mass. Uh, we can, can also estimate the stellar gas and stellar mass. Okay, so the stellar mass is estimated from the, this correlation from two. And uh, then we have already derived the galaxy number density profile, so we just distributed the uh, total uh, stellar mass equally following these functions. So we do have uh, stellar mass profiles. For gas mass, we have the, because our um, total dynamic, dynamic mass is married to very large radii, which we have could be no extra emitting gas. So we use the extrapolations, assuming either beta function or multiple beta, beta function to determine uh, up to if we have the de extra data. So give you an idea what the extrapolation is like. I use the modified profile for modified beta function. This is the electron number density, which is here. 
the fitted skirt, and this is what the cumulative mass looks like. The E was somewhat infected. We have more gas at larger area. It's much higher than that. So then here is the relative acceleration inversion, where the total baryonic acceleration calculated, including the stellar mass, gas mass, and uh, BCG mass. So everything is included. Um, this is the model here, and the total baryonic mass is from what we measure the diameter mass. Uh, so we also see there is still a missing baryonic pro missing mass problem in Mount, which is not new here. But what's new here is we go to large area as we use in galaxies to test the gravitational potential, we can go to larger radii and they fall below the, well, this is the problem because we want to add more mass here in a small radii to compensate the discrepancy. But if we move these points here to solve this problem, these points would also move here. That means that you can solve this problem, but you would not be able to solve this problem at the same time. Uh, as I just mentioned, we use electrolytics which could overestimate the total mass so the baryonic mass, that's a possibility. So what if I cut half of them, the 30%, then they move here, the tension relieved a lot. Uh, somehow, then I can remove the, the extrapolation mass entirely. So no extrapolation mass, all the baryonic mass are measured, but they're roughly consistent. Which seems good, but not, this is not galaxies, because for galaxies, we do not need to introduce any additional mass. So we do not need you know, to compensate the small the discrepancy at small radii, but at larger radii we have this problem. So we need to add additional mass. But at this point, no, we don't have the room. This is the bad sign. Well, it's not due to the extrapolations. Uh, to basically, the, the problem could be more serious if we look at the cumulative mass profiles. If we calculate the missing mass profile, let me tell you what I did here. So as you assume the relative acceleration is correct, so we can measure the GE of so we use this function to calculate the g-bar, which is uh, g-bar is not entirely correct because it includes all mass, even dark matter or neutrino mass. And we can, once we have the g-bar, we know the total baryonic mass, this is the required total baryonic mass, according to Mount. And we have already observed some gas mass, stellar mass, if we subtract them, then we get the missing mass cumulative profile. Okay, two minutes enough. And uh, then we plot them together here, this is the result here. So for, for, for example, A129, so we found this problem at the large radii, but even at the small radii, so like at 8 kbc or 9 kbc, 900 kbc. So this cumulative mass profile, the e first increased and then decreased, this is the problem, because cumulative mass profile should monotonically increase, they cannot decrease. If it decreases, it means we have negative mass density profile here at this radius, which is not possible. And for not all of those clusters, for this uh, A, so for these five clusters are A seventeen ninety five or these small clusters, uh, five among the ten clusters, five of them are problematic, but the other five is fine. Like for A A zero zero eighty five, this is fine. You can you have enough room to add additional mass. No problem for one at this at this moment. And so certainly we could uh, touch on the, our assumptions, as I said in the beginning. So we assume the galaxies are in dynamic equilibrium with the cluster. It may not be true. The, uh, so we also look at the other results, which from the x -Corp. We assume hydrostatic equilibrium, entirely different assumptions, and they get very similar results, unfortunately. So they go to large area, they are all their clusters apart. Not very big simple, but we have noticed that. So it's simple, sample is not large. But they all go beyond that. So we need uh, additional mass to fix this problem, to move the points to this side. But once we move them to there, then this point will go to this side as well. Then the problem is more serious. And also, they plot the cumulative mass profile. So they all go to negative at the larger area. So turn to uh, start decreasing as more area, then that's the problem. Uh, one thing, uh, there's one cast that's overlapped, overlapped so A2149. This problem here, but in our case we do not have this problem. So a this is a twenty one forty two. These clusters, okay. So then then there's no uh, no problem for these clusters. That's because our missing profile is higher than that. So then I came to my conclusion first. It seems to me that the dynamic equilibrium of galaxies and the hydrostatic equilibrium seem to be incompatible with Mars. But also two questions to ask: How robust the incompatibility is? 
we need to careful care, uh, think about the uncertainties. How the incompatible will be is by one sigma, three sigma, five sigma. If we use three sigma uh, questions, can we uh, reconcile them? The other question is how general the incompatibility is. So only for we only have small sample for a few clusters. Whether this problem is general for other clusters <coughs> can be discovered. We want to see that. That brings me to the second conclusion. I think we can do clusters now. So when we say missing but missing mass problem in galaxy clusters, it sounds like we have to wait for decades for new observations to detect all the missing mass before we can robustly detect the model. So this is tell us, this is trying to tell us no, we can test it now. But plotting the cumulative missing profiles, at least we can do an early test. So we can do it now. Thanks, I'm happy to take questions. change some parameters in the model, say A0, take it as a fitting parameter, will it work? Uh, if you want to increase it or decrease it? <laughs> well, uh, you tell it. me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, if, as you just showed you, so if we increase it, the really acceleration will do this way. So that means you remove this problem, but there's problem at that radius. So the better for you is to decrease the acceleration scale. So then you would have large discrepancy at small radii, but the discrepancy at the larger. But the problem, the the, the good, good news is you can have more room to add additional mass. So for better, decrease cannot. It could have for now. For in future, I'm not, I'm not sure. Reconcile this problem. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, you've mapped the projected uh, density distribution of galaxies around the cluster. Can you go to that? Uh, that's, yeah, this, this, should be, this, this should be good. I, I was just wondering, uh, in, in your clusters, uh, cluster sample, do you find uh, uh, any clusters where so the, there is sort of a depletion of galaxies in the central regions? Depletion? Depletion. Uh, there's one cluster. So I can't show you, I don't remember them, but... Uh, um, I think there's one cluster, CK. I don't know what happened for this cluster, which is A1795. So they start at a very large area. So we do not have the sample of clusters at small radii. So with the sample we have at large area. So I can't get the profile of this area. which are the one giving the negative, in, sorry, the decreasing in closed mass profile, they come entirely from the sunayev zeldovich effect at large radii, because in this work they combine both X-rays with the SZ effect from Planck. And so maybe they did the right job, but it's a bit worrying that when you switch the technique, uh, essentially you enter in a regime of something strange. Uh, and I think the same is true for your own results, if you go one plot back, because essentially, there may be two plot back. yes. So, you know, the, the points that approach there are the gray ones that come from extrapolating the beta profile. And, you know, we don't know if the extrapolation is no, no, it's probably good yeah. or not. So, I think, I don't know what are your ideas about this. Uh, it's definitely weird that two very different techniques find the same thing, and so maybe it is true, but it's also happening when, uh, let's say, the data quality and the assumptions that we make become more important. So, um, yeah, that's possible. That's what I said. We need to carefully treat 
the uncertainties, say whether we can bring it back to the um, consistency of our web sigma or not. At least uh, my approach to bring at least one cluster to be consistent. That, that is the this cluster. A2142, this cluster, A2142. In the sample, so A2142, they go to the next year. So because our mass profiles is much higher than their results. A2146, they have higher than that. Even more than one sigma, so they are very large, but still way much higher than that. So, so, so it's possible. That, that then. small effect over there calls yeah, that that's very small. large discrepancy. It's small in log scale. It's small in log scale. Yeah. So it means possible. That's why I think we need to be careful with the uncertainties. All right. Look, you also mentioned the possibility that galaxies are not in uh, I real life, essentially. Oh, well, that's possible. Definitely possible. We cannot include that. Possible, right? But yeah. what, what sort of uh, departure from equilibrium would it, for example, if the galaxies are now just in falling into the cluster? Uh, the basic fact, uh, the basic problem, I take it, is that the velocity dispersion at large radii is small. Mm -hmm. It's too small in a sense, yeah. right? If it were actually higher, so if the virial uh, velocity dispersion were, was higher, then it would lift. So your points up. So let's say that those galaxies are not actually virialized at this large radii with several megaparsecs, but they are just infalling now into the cluster. So if they are infalling, that means the measured velocity dispersion should be larger than actual values. Right? Then that means we overestimated the data. Yeah, they haven't yet reached the velocity dispersion of the cluster. They, if they fall, you know, they will still have to. Because you don't know where they're coming from, of course. Uh, okay, yeah, then, yeah, that's possible. So you, you think about the larger radii, but um, what I just mentioned, so even a small radii, there could be such a problem, but I'm not sure. So, like here, within one megaparsec, I don't think we consider the important cluster. Can, can you go to the anisotropy profile? Answer. Yes, because I think that's an indication that maybe related to what Martin was saying, that you know, we measure increasingly radial anisotropy in the outer part, which is probably an indication that you know, things at larger radii are not fully thermalized. Uh, maybe we... Not even here, the yeah. model captures... Exactly. The model itself makes some... Yeah, that's possible. So I think we need more techniques. Like, I, I, I wanted to ask also about this uh, isotropy profiles. Uh, I, I agree that uh, it tends towards radio, or at least most of the lines are rising as you go to the outside. Uh, that's consistent with the fact that you might be just seeing the things falling in and whatever. Uh, I realize the, um, the errors on beta are large, but uh, they do tend to dip below zero no? if, uh, to, for the central regions. Uh, tangential and isotropy, really? Uh, no, I doubt it as well. That as well. <laughs> <laughs> and especially this one. So for those, uh, yes. I think they could be true because this is neat. Well, I can compare them to one well, right? So this could be <laughs> this problem. As the, we, need pro uh, we already introduced the 10 parameters in our field because we want to get, any, get, uh, get rid of any bias. But for most of the clusters found this very well, we checked the posterior distributions, which is as I expected, but probably not as you expected. <laughs> but for this cluster, it's not as I expected. So this is the only one I'm worried about. But you can remove this cluster, like A2029. This does not affect the mass too much, you know? So because uh, the, this error is also kind of re reflected in the error bar. As so we move with mass, mass. is in log scale. Well, it might be an indication that the bit is wrong. Sorry? It might not affect the mass, but it might be indicating that there's the something wrong with the bit. Uh, no, the, the bit does not have problem. That, that does not have problem. Uh, uh, the only problem could be the function. So. Well, the question about uh, these clusters are very nice, it's of course very critical. And uh, so normally we look at them as evolved clusters, like the Carnot cluster, which is evolved. 
I heard the price quite a number of them which are quite evolved, like they go for 96, they go 85, they go 1795. Therefore, I recognize all of them. But uh, did you check whether these are really the, these clusters have the morphology of evolved clusters? Uh, can you say it again? Uh, did you check well, whether I, I recognize a number of them like really evolved varialized clusters? But did you check that, all of them? or? You mean the X-ray image or what? Just by, the, uh, by looking at the images of the, uh, of the cluster. Oh, no. I so those have been checked, so they people believe. So those already have some, I look at some problematic, so people think they are prob problematic ones. So for those who want, people think they are good, I do not look at the X-ray images. I only look at the X-ray uh, galaxy distributions. But if you want to check, maybe you should be able to find them in the literature. In my study, in my paper. So yes, it's a comment, not a question. <laughs> well, no, the, the the issue of technique came up, and one of the nice things here is that you can compare the kinematic mass profile to the X-ray mass profile and the SE mass profile, uh, but. Uh, a detail that that reminded me of is that um, I've worried a long time that when you look at the mass on um, something like Tully Fisher, the offset uh, curves when you switch from using kinematics to using x-rays. So it's like, mm, that's suspicious. Um, but I've never seen any reason to suspect it. Um, but uh, I was reminded Monty has a couple of nice papers on groups of galaxies using kinematics uh, rather than x-rays, and I don't know that any of those groups have x-rays, but they're pretty much on the Montoli fisher relation, and there's an overlap in mass with some of these that are off, and the difference seems to be the presence or absence of the x-rays. I don't know that that tells us anything, but it's another suspicious, you know, you have these loose groups that you wouldn't think are necessarily periodized, but you do the kinetic, kinematics in there consistent with long, and you have these rich x-ray things that are different, where most of the baryons are x-rays, and it's off. But you also have the x-ray if you the power of perfect number of Perseids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. I think we can start moving into the discussion, right? So let's